good. Um, so good. Um, so I just wanted to fill you in a little bit on who QCC is, because some of you would be more familiar with us than others. Um, so we're a peak body for conservation groups in Queensland, um, and we work with a bunch of groups throughout Queensland to sort of collaborate on campaigns, share information. Um, and then we also run our own standalone campaigns that tend to focus on statewide issues. Um, so we're a voice for nature in Queensland. Um, so as that peak body, um, a sort of a collective voice, I guess. Um, and we have a vision for a healthy environment and a safe climate for all. Um, and we all want to achieve that by uniting Qu Queenslanders um, for nature and climate justice. Um, so QCC has been around for just over 50 years now. Um, so quite a while, which is exciting, um, and been involved in a lot of the major um, Queensland environmental campaigns over the years. Um, so I might hand over to John now, and I'm also going to share some slides. Um, and John's going to talk you through our national parks, state forest campaigns. Thank you, Haley. And thanks for sharing the slides. Uh, we can go to the next one, probably. It's a beautiful, beautiful wildlife and beautiful ecosystems there. So um, the National Parks for Life campaign is part of our campaign for increasing the protected areas uh, within Queensland. Um, so we believe um, that the well-managed national parks and private land reserves, um, which are all part of private protected areas, are our best chance to protect endangered wildlife um, from a variety of um, uh, pressures that they're they're increasingly coming under. So from things like land clearing, uh, attacks from pets and dogs and, and, and cats, um, climate change, induce, induce heat waves, uh, bushfires, those types of things. Can save, conserve that nature then for future generations to enjoy, because we do know that um, people do enjoy going into protected areas such as national parks. They do enjoy going in there for not only um, to see the area, but for their own health benefits, um, mental health, physical health, et cetera. Uh, and we also know that national parks um, in Queensland bring about $3.7 billion to the Queensland economy um, through people using those parks, but also in, the, in using the surrounding areas and going to cafes and, and other types of things, staying in the local communities, those types of things as well. So we really wanna make sure that we're protecting that wildlife, but we're also conserving that nature for our current generations, but also for future generations, as well as we wanna protect the cultural values. I mean, we start off, a, all of our meetings with an acknowledgement of country. Um, we pay our respects to the elders um, of this land that we're on. And, you know, we really want to make sure that the cultural values of that land is protected and that we do that in a way that's that's in conjunction with the First Nations people of this continent. Um, so that's something that's very important to us. Um, you may have seen in, in various things that we've sent out that right now Queensland has only about 8.2% of its land um, protected, that's about 14 million hectares. Um, that is the lowest of any state or territory in Australia. Um, we have, you know, a, a large variety of land, um, a large amount of land, but, and also some of the most unique uh, species that are av available anywhere in Australia, yet we have so little of our land protected. And it's taken us 120 years to get to that point. It's taken us 120 years from the time that the first national park was set aside to get to the point where we have 8.26% of our land protected. Um, we, we need to do better and we need to do more. And in 2020, the Queensland government came out with their protected area strategy. And the protected area strategy was basically their sort of commitment to doubling the protected area state. So again, national parks, but also private protected areas. So that would be nature um, refuges or wildlife reserves um, to a, a total of 17%. So that would again be doubling it. Um, and probably if you wanted to do it within 10 years, so again, the strategy is listed as 2020 to 2030. Um, now the, the minister will be um, 
quick to point out that they didn't say it would be done by 2030. Um, but I think, you know, the strategy is 2020 to 2030. So why not say that it'll be done in 10 years? But look, we'll give them a the benefit of the doubt. We'll add an extra two years and say prior to the, the Olympics, can we double it? But if we're going to do that, that means adding 1.5 million hectares of land to the pr protected area state between now and um, 2032 each year, 1.5 million each year, because we have to be able to double that. Um, so that's what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve an increase, a significant increase in the protected area state within Queensland to get the majority of these sort of unique and wonderful ecosystems that are out there and wildlife that are out there protected. Um, and so this is going to require a lot of work. Um, Haley, if you'd like to go to the next slide. Get it? Working on it. That's okay. Well, while she's trying try on that. Um, so some of the things that we're, one of the things we're asking is um, we are asking for sufficient funding to make sure that we can acquire, convert, and manage, and that's an important part. We, we need to acquire the land, we need to convert it to national parks, and we need to manage the current national parks, but also any other private protected areas or new national parks that we put together, um, that we need to be able to sufficiently fund that. So that's one of our asks. The next ask is that we purchase and convert the land to achieve that goal in 10 years. Um, we need to get to that point as fast and quickly as possible. And there's different ways that we can do that. And I'll talk to about that in a, in a moment. Um, and the other way is making sure that we extend the consent based model that's seen in the Cape York uh, Peninsula. Um, and I just lost the other word for it, Cape York Peninsula Resolution Program um, for new Aboriginal owned and managed national parks. So those are the things that we're asking um, when it comes to the National Parks for Life. Those are the things that we want to see. Um, we've achieved a little bit so far. Um, one of the things that you probably have seen in, in recent news and, and emails that have come out from um, QCC is that uh, we did just get a commitment from the government of $301 million towards the acquisition infrastructure and management of protected areas. Now that includes, that includes 300, I'm sorry, 38.5 million that was announced earlier in the year for the Cape York 10 year resolution program. Um, and that includes then 262.5 million dollars new money. Um, for the, like I said, the acquisition, the management, and the infrastructure within national parks and private protected areas. That's really, really quite significant because when the strategy started in 2020, they had only committed to $36 million over four years. So this is 200, or I'm sorry, a total of $301 million over the next four years, as opposed to the initial investment of only $36 million over four years. So that's, I mean, that goes to the work that all of our supporters, all of our member groups, et cetera, have done to, to really make it clear to the government that this is important and they need to fund this and fund this properly. So well done to all of you on that. Um, another thing that we've seen this year so far is a, an additional conversion of um, almost 170 thousand hectares of land since the beginning of this year. And that's significant in the fact that between 2019 and the beginning of this year, there were no conversions of land. There were no acquisitions of land for national parks. So even though they put out this uh, protected area strategy in 2020, there was no real purchase between when they put it out and the beginning of this year. So they're just starting to show us that they're going to pr purchase and convert land into national parks. Um, so that's something that's really, really significant. So now I said it earlier that I was going to talk a little bit about how we get some of that land because 1.5 million hectares of land a year is a lot of land. So there is the purchase of land. Um, there are properties that the government has already purchased over the last several years, um, you know, even before 2019 that have not been converted to national parks. So those are things that we need to get them to do. And the other way to do that is to look at the current state um, forests that we have and what of those can be converted because one of the things that you may not realize and, and Kelly if you can go to the next well the next two slides actually so show them the pretty picture and then um, is that 
national parks are protected from things like logging, but state parks, state forests are not. Um, so as part of the National Parks for Life campaign, we really see the protecting of our native forests um, currently held within the state forests as a priority. So trying to get the government to, to transfer those over to national parks. So in Southeast Queensland, we have about 70,000 hectares of state forests that we have um, had a report done and that we've had research done that we believe should be transferred over to national parks. The government has made a commitment to end logging and trans in Southeast Queensland by 2024 and transfer 20,000 hectares, but that still leaves 50,000 hectares that are open to logging. Um, so that's something that we need, we need to really look at is, you know, that's only in Southeast Queensland too. We're not talking about all of the other state forests that are in the rest of Queensland. We're just talking about the 70,000 hectares that we know that should be transferred in Southeast Queensland. And that would be a big start to do something like that. So this is another part of our campaign. And it's a part that Haley will talk a little bit more about. Um, and it's sort of what she's focusing on. And it's really something that's very important to us. So how do we tr transfer these over? Um, because it, you know, these are irreplaceable intact native ecosystems. Um, they have really high levels of biodiversity. Um, hundreds of plants and animal species are classified as endangered, live in these areas. Um, and again, it's a cultural a cultural sites for the Gabi Gabi, Gabi Gabi and Jinnabara Waka Waka, Waka Waka peoples. So we really wanna make sure that they are protected. And right now as a state forest, they're not protected from logging. Um, and if you wanna continue on, Haley, thank you. Somebody, I should go back to that previous photo. Somebody mentioned Fernie Forest, and this was found in Bureau State Forest. Um, Fernie Forest is part of Bureau State Forest, and this was found by someone. Um, um, was it you actually, Haley? Or was it someone else? Okay, I thought it was, I, I didn't think it was, but I know you took some photos up there. Um, and we had to look into this, and this started the Save Fernie Forest campaign, which we'll talk a little bit about. So if you wanna to go to the next one. So again, these native forests and Bureau State Forests are called by the locals for any forest. Um, the logging was supposed to start at, at the beginning of this year, but because of the work that has been done by a lot of the local groups, including the Sunshine Coast Environmental Council, and as I said, Save for any Forest um, and other groups, they've stopped that logging from happening for now. Um, because we've shown the government and we've shown others how important this area is and how important it is to save it. So this would be one of the areas that we would want to see changed from state forests to national parks. And as it says here on the slide, it's home to vulnerable species such as the glossy black cockatoo, greater gliders, koalas, and tusk frogs. So these are, you know, these are species that we want to save. So it's really, really important for us to be able to look at these areas and try to stop them from logging in them. Um, again, they're planning on stopping the logging in them by 2024, but they can do a lot of logging between now and then in those areas. So we really want to try to get them to stop that logging earlier than that, if possible, but then also transfer them into national parks so they can be protected from things like logging in the future. Um, so for the, you know, for the state forest, we're looking to get that 70,000 hectares in Southeast Queensland to be transferred to protected areas, but then also extend this process through the rest of the state and protect the rest of the state forest from logging and other such um, impacts on the environment and on the ecosystems and on the species that we have there. I think that's, I think I'll stop there because I've sort of been going on for a little while. Um, and like you said, we'll have time for uh, questions at the end. Thanks so much for that, John. Um, so now I'll get into a couple of um, big projects that QCC and volunteers involved are running um, to sort of try to highlight why these areas are important, why national parks are important, why state forests are important um, and push for their protection. Um, so, yeah, obviously that this is sort of, I guess, opportunities for people to get involved um, and actively involved in the campaigns um, on top of the other work we do around media um, and direct advocacy and research and that sort of thing. Um, so there's two big projects um, that we have going at the moment. 
that we'd love you all to get involved with. Um, so one of these projects um, is our Saving Wild Homes art competition. So we're ex very excited to be running this for the second time um, in two years. Um, and it's a competition that has been run by volunteers. Um, and we know that art and story are a great way to get the message across about why protected areas and wildlife is important. Um, so last year, um, the competition was only focused on children, um, but we thought everyone has a story to share um, about protected areas. So we want to make it, make it a broader competition this year. Um, so we're running this in as a way to reach new people, uh, build visibility and build active support for better, bigger and better protected areas. And in doing so, pressure the government to protect more of Queensland, um, including transferring state forest to national parks or other protected areas. Um, as well as being a competition, um, it's also, you could think about it as like a creative petition. Um, so artwork's gonna play an important role in getting the message across that protected areas are important. Um, so we'll deliver the art to the environment minister. Um, we'll use it to engage new people um, through exhibitions and stalls. Um, and we'll also use it um, as part of like creative stunts, um, visible stunts, like protect, projecting the artwork on buildings and things like that to sort of um, get people's attention. Um, so a few dates and things to think about for those who are looking at entering. Um, so submissions close 31st of August, and then we'll have people's choice through September. Um, so we're after online digital submission. So we've got a submission page, um, which I'll share at the end, um, but also over email. Also, you can just find it on our website um, where people can submit artwork, um, preferably fairly high quality co copies, um, nice photos um, or scanned copies. Um, so we're after visual art, so paintings, drawings, mixed media um, type of thing. Um, and then to think about judging criteria, um, where um, so quality of the artwork, um, theme, protect saving wild homes, um, so how does the artwork communicate that message? Um, and the artwork tells a specific story about a protected area or unprotected area or a species. Um, obviously that sounds quite intense, uh, but we want everyone to participate however they like. So um, even if you don't necessarily win, as I said, your artwork's gonna be used as part of the broader campaign as well. Um, and we're encouraging, think, we're encouraging people to think about um, why wild homes are important. Um, so maybe thinking about a particular national park that's important to you or other form of protected area. Um, why that, or thinking about areas that aren't protected, that should be protected, um, such as state forests, um, and also maybe thinking about vulnerable or endangered wildlife that need their story shared um, and expressing that in the form of art um, as much as possible. Um, so there's a few examples here. So these are some of the ones we had submitted last year. Um, so lots of various stories there. Um, and this, these were all kids and just the stories that went with artwork. Um, was pretty powerful as well. And yeah, as I mentioned, um, it's all ages, um, but obviously when kids are submitting artwork, we're gonna be considering age in that as well. So we're getting people, if they're submitting on behalf of a child, um, let us know their age so we can keep that in mind while judging. Um, and as I mentioned, as we're going to do this year, um, and as we did last year, 
um, was we put together all the artwork in a book, um, which we then delivered to the environment minister. Um, so we had a couple of entrants um, submit the artwork to and hand over the book to the minister. Um, and we'll certainly do a similar thing this year as well. And as I said, use it in a variety of different creative ways. Um, so we've also had volunteers with last year's art. And there again, we'll do it after this um, entry is closed this year as well, run pop-up art exhibitions. Um, so we've held, held one in a shopping centre as well as one at a World Environment Day event um, to just display the art and get people having a look and getting involved and reading the stories. Um, so there's a bunch of different ways that you can help. Um, I would love your help. So obviously you can enter the competition. Um, so by August 31st, as I mentioned, um, I'm doing that, sharing the competition on social media for others, um, as well as consider um, emailing your artwork to the minister um, and MP as well to talk about why you painted what you did and why you think it's important. Um, share the art competition with your networks. Um, so you might have a bunch of networks, maybe in art groups or wildlife groups that you can share the competition with. Um, you might want to get a group of friends together and head out into a forest and paint some art. Um, and obviously we'd love volunteers. So help, any help we can get organizing and promoting the competition, um, organizing displays, stalls, um, exhibitions, helping out with digital um, and design work. Um, like for example, helping us put together the book that we'll hand over at the end of the year um, and also help organize creative um, media events and stunts and that sort of thing. Um, additional support, support that we're always keen to have is um, ideas or thoughts on display or exhibition venues. Um, if anyone has ideas there or has contacts um, and also art comp prizes as well. So we're finalizing that now. We haven't um, publicly announced that yet, um, hopefully in the next week, um, but any support there would be great too. Um, so we can jump onto questions shortly, um, but if you've got any questions about the art comp while I'm going through the other things, um, feel free to put it in the chat and then we can get to it shortly. So the other big project that we've been working on is Forest Watch. So, so specifically, this is about protecting um, state forests in Southeast Queensland. Um, however, there's no reason why this can't be replicated in other state forests broader than Southeast Queensland as well. So what we're pushing for, as um, John mentioned, is that we want the Queensland government to commit or commit to transferring all 70,000 hectares of native state forest in Southeast Queensland to protected areas, um, as we've sort of identified through research as to what needs to be transferred. Um, and we want to transfer before any further logging occurs as well. Um, so we're building an active, so we're building active support for the protection of Southeast Queensland um, and highlighting the conservation value of these areas through Citizen Science Project, otherwise known as Forest Watch. Um, so we're holding a series of BioBlitz events, uh, basically plant and animal surveys um, across Southeast Queensland, state forests to highlight what's in these state forests, basically. Um, so we're sort of building a network of um, citizen scientists who are keeping an eye on these state forests and identifying what's there. So then we can push, highlight what is there and push for their protection. Um, so we're building that network both through the BioBlitz events, um, but also through iNaturalist. 
So our naturalist is a program online or it's an app that you can just download um, and use in your own time in any sort of park natural setting um, to basically um, observe what you see and record that information. Um, and what we're also in by what we're also doing by developing that network of people is also, um, I guess, developing a network of people who are the eyes for the state forests. So they can let us know if you see logging, um, record it, take photos, so we can share it to sort of let people know that there is active logging in Southeast Queensland. Um, so it's, yeah, so for, Forest Watch, it's about connecting people to state forests, um, but also using the data collected to share with ministers, media and public um, and to increase a profile and increase the profile of these state forests um, to support their protection. So you're probably thinking, where are these state forests? Um, so as we mentioned, we had some research done um, end of last year that basically research these state forests in Southeast Queensland that are due to, that are due for the end of logging by 20, end of 2024. Um, so this is basically a map of those conservation, of those areas of high conservation value that should be transferred to protected areas. Um, so we're basically looking at kind of North Brisbane, Sunshine Coast, West. Um, so there's not really any state forests in the Gold Coast or south of Brisbane. Um, and a major chunk and priority is the sort of Yabba, Jimna, um, Squirrel Creek state forests. Um, Cause that's like, a, yeah, quite a big massive area that um, is quite connected. <laughs> Um, and also connects Conondale National, National Park in the south with Rattons National Park in the north. Um, so as I mentioned, um, we're using iNaturalist as a way to build that network. Um, so it's kind of, I guess, where people end up if they join us on a BioBlitz, but it's also a way that people can get out into state forests on their own, in their own time. Um, and record what they see. Um, so anyone can use iNaturalist um, and we've set up a project within that um, where people can um, join, share what they find in Southeast Queensland and then keep in the loop with other um, activities and things like that. So we've already held one BioBlitz so far, um, and that was supporting the Save Fernie Forest campaign. Um, so we sort of, I think in total collected about 200 observations um, on that day. So it was just maybe two, three hours in the forest. Um, There's also some people that went in there um, before the BioBlitz in their own time that collected information as well. Um, and then we use that information to share on social media, um, share with the environment minister um, to sort of highlight why furnished forests should be protected um, and push for the end of native logging. As I mentioned, um, yeah, so in, in two hours with 33 people, with 30 people at the BioBlitz, we collected 200 species. So that was birds, insects, plants, fungi. Um, so there's a, also a bunch of ways that you can help, um, help out with Forest Watch as well. So you can join the iNaturalist. Um, so join iNaturalist and join the Forest Watch project. Um, and then you can head out to state forests and record what you see. Um, in doing so, you can also let us know if you see sightings of logging. Um, so keep us updated on what you see, where it's happening, 
um, how much they're taking, that sort of thing. Um, and also any sort of key, obviously it's destructive either way, um, but anything that you think is particularly dodgy. Um, and you can join the next bio blitz. So that one's coming up in two and a half weeks um, on the 6th of August in Beer Barham. Um, so that's sort of just south end of um, the Sunshine Coast, just west of Caboolture. Um, and then obviously you can volunteer. Um, so what we sort of need um, is a bunch of more people, um, obviously getting out, taking these observations, but also helping us to sort of highlight the information that we find as well. Um, so that might be through helping with data gathering research, um, information gathering, um, helping us organize BioBlitz events, keeping an eye on our naturalist and pulling out um, anything that's particularly noteworthy that we can then um, use on social media, um, as well as media, as well as handing over to the minister. Um, help us develop digital content, um, think about and help organize creative tactics where we can there again, use information we gather. Um, and yeah, a bunch of different ways there. So um, that sort of, I guess, covers a few things there. So the other thing that we're um, keen to get from you, so obviously I went through quite a bit of information there as to how you can help in relation to the Saving Wild Homes as well as Forest Watch. Um, so I've got a form for you all. Um, so I'm just going to stop Haley, screen sharing. I did put the link to the form in the chat. Great. Thank you. Uh, John's already onto it. So if you can open that um, and fill it in, that would be great. Um, so preferably open it now because um, obviously you can open it you can fill it in after the webinar, but if you open it now, um, you won't lose it. Um, so that sort of brings us to most of the information part. Um, so now I wanna open it up to questions. Um, so preferably chuck your question in the chat, um, but if you have any particular key question, uh, maybe turn your video on and raise your hand or make yourself known in some way. <laughs> While we're waiting to, I, I did also put in the chat the link to the art comp, um, as well as a link to the page on the state forests, which includes the link, on that page includes the link to the art comp and the forest watch and stuff like that. 